I had a dream where my teeth were falling out and Google has like so many interpretations that it just becomes meaningless. But Carl Jung did analyze it as losing a grip on something and that's true for me. Lately, I have been having a quite the unhealthy relationship with my own channel. It was reminiscent of an old relationship I had that seemed bright and fun on the surface, providing me with lots of joy and validation. But relying on a relationship for validation led to deep distress and eventual resentment and depression, etc, etc. I ended up entering that phase of making content on here where I huffed copium on the very idea of growth. Such an American born mindset that the Illusion. I don't know why because I know the channel has a ceiling but I wanted to reach it just to see and go hi and even though it didn't affect the content so much it did affect the intent behind it and that needed to change. It's a mental switch that happened recently and I'm in that phase where I will truly truly make what I want on here with no care about audience retention because self-display requires no audience and yes I am very very fortunate I even have an audience at all but people who watch everything I make absolutely understand my patrons understand they support me because they want to regardless of what I am doing they support me not the Joshi content but me so I want to have fun but what does that have to do with me, Suruga? Well, everything. Got to move. Choco Pro Wrestling is my favorite promotion in the world and the one I will support wholeheartedly as long as I can because they give me the most genuine joy watching wrestling. And this doesn't discount the actual wrestling because they have serious talents and a future with stars like Miyu Yotsuba and great underrated talents like Obi-San. Even Chie Koshikawa will surprise you. Masa Takanashi is such a gangster and Choco Mitz, of course, will understand his value but Bali and Aki is seriously slept on as a professional wrestler. The man is beautiful in there and Queen Emmy is Queen Emmy for a reason. But this includes Mei Suruga. Mei Suruga is the big apple girl. Sweet and joyful to watch. Big personality packed in that under five foot body but also a devious goblin who tastes people and is chaotic evil in the most cute way possible. She is honestly one of the cutest things in the entirety of the world. Like look at her have a cute on purpose standoff with Azumi as the judge. And Azumi still correctly choosing Mei Suruga as the cutest. But she is also a wonderful theatric performer as the best supporting actor in wrestling with a character that will break kayfabe, but I don't care. This is a performance art and she deserves her flowers for it. But beyond any of this, Beyond the adorable, often mean, but always entertaining personality, she is a phenomenal professional wrestler in the ring. Moving so effortlessly, combining her theatric skills to really add to that in-ring element, she wrestles smart in there, never going too far beyond what she needs to do, and never doing too much. She's always less is more legitimately an S-tier performer and one of my favorites performing today. Well, what else about Mei Suruga? Why bring up the whole beginning personal rant? Because Mei Suruga said something recently at the Got The Move show that is quite honestly one of the most profound things I've heard from a wrestler in a long time. And it's incredibly simple. <laughs> That might not seem profound, but it is. It truly is. There are two doors, or two paths. The hard path and the fun path. Life is inherently absurd. The way our world is structured, designed, and run is a complete farce. Like the comedian and watchman realize, it's all a joke. A joke played on us, and we're not the audience. Modern life is filled with an abundance of inherently absurd, unmeaningful, and fictional things. We are boxed in little roles to keep a machine running through our employment that the vast majority of us do not like and live paycheck to paycheck 
paycheck just to survive in a world with a vast amount of overabundance in it, where everyone can live a basic life 10 times over, and we are boxed into our social media bubbles, sharing opinions with people who already agree with us and thinking it is in sight, while eating fake food filled with chemicals, drinking water filled with chemicals, breathing in air filled with chemicals that our ancestors would deem toxic, then getting sick in a healthcare system we cannot even afford, and then numbing our depression with synthetic pills run by pharmaceutical companies who want us to stay numbed for their bottom line, while being psychologically conditioned by mainstream media, and I don't mean to hit too close to home, but that is reality, and that vast, vast majority of us prefer to remain in some sedated state, be it drugs, alcohol, marijuana, work, partying, or like many of us watching this right now, wrestling. But you may think I am criticizing people for sedating themselves in some way, but no, I am not. This is the answer to our fucked up world, and it's not wrong. I think the vast majority of the world is suffering from mental illness, but refuse to confront it because, again, life is inherently absurd. And if we have to live in this absurd world, then let us have some fucking fun, goddammit. This is why we watch wrestling to begin with, right? Because it was fun. Somewhere down the line, we learn more and more about wrestling, the dirt sheets, the terminology, work rate, and psychology. Words that only have meaning to other professional wrestlers, not fans. Imagine watching a movie and going, oh. That's the Meisner technique. No, you plebe. That's Stanislavski. Okay, Tony Storm. We suddenly become the critic and the judge of what is good because I took the time to watch it. Me, me, me. We took it too seriously. Professional wrestling is one of the stupidest forms of performance art out there that we have ever come up with as a species. But the fact that it is so popular across the globe says that it is a universal language that resonates with people's desire to escape reality and watch conflict play out under the guise of scripted reality because wrestling is not real. We know this and yet treat it far more real than any of the stuff I said above about society. Choose the fun door. It opened my eyes a bit about the nature of my own path in life and with the channel. I took it too, too seriously. The numbers, the data, the viewership. My channel is bleeding like Tim Roth and Reservoir Dogs and I thought I needed to be Mr. White and save it. But truth is, who cares? The shootout is a far funner option because that path was not fun. Make whatever I want. My audience probably wants stardom, but I want to dive into TJPW, and that's what's going to happen. Life is inherently absurd, so make it whatever you want. I remember watching Bill Hicks over 15 years ago, and he already said it, and yet, I forgot it. The world is like a ride at an amusement park, and when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time and they begin to question, is this real or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered and they come back to us and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid ever because this is just a ride and we kill those people. <laughs> Life is just a ride and instead of traveling the hard door, open the fun door. I know that's easy to say in the West. I know there are deep problems like our tax dollars currently being used to bomb children, corporations destroying unions, the rich getting far, far richer, the rise of the useless class, sanctuary cities for the unhoused, the fact that there will be a trillionaire in our life and that they did not earn it, but inherited it, and that there is a child right now living in the world, a modern world, who knows that one day he'll be king in modern life. But what the fuck am I going to do about it? I can be like Tyler Durden. I can express deep, deep truths that resonate deeply with us. But the thing people forget about Tyler Durden and Fight Club, it was written by a gay man making fun of the male psyche and people like Tyler because Tyler Durden didn't have a solution to the problem. If you do have a solution, choose the hard door. You will find it more meaningful. For me, in regards to my approach to politics and the way our world is going, I am very serious. But in regards to creativity, to wrestling, to entertainment, I choose to open the fun door. And I suspect many of you 
I'll do the same. Take all that money we spend on weapons and defense each year and instead spend it feeding, clothing, and educating the poor of the world, which it would many times over, not one human being excluded, and we can explore space together, both inner and outer, forever in peace. Thank you very much. You've been great. I hope you enjoyed it. London, you're fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you to all my Patreon sponsors. Some of you have been supporting me for almost a year by now, and that is crazy to me, and I just greatly thank you. I love all of you. Thank you so much for allowing me to do this. Thank you so much for letting me unpack some time. And thank you so much for just supporting me, not the Joshi content, not stardom, but me. Thank you so much. Thank you to Jeff, The Up Channel, Geek and Noah's Dad, Anthony Allen Knowledge, Tiege, Renee Valdez, Asia Trace, Max, Justin Stein, Matthew Pelotruska, Neil Jeffu, Terrence Danwood, Kev Mullen, Adam K, Way Connor Shige, Party Marty 520, Punk Wicks Videos, Juggernaut Graphics, Shut Up Ingo Duck Wave, Aaron Sicarius, Far 5222, I Want Victims, JLA, Julia Sunglasses, Chi Wall, Paul Darwin, Pickle Simon, Scott Racer, Steven Siemens, Cover Tari, D Smoon, Lil Choop Choop, Tony Davis, and Jesse, The Outlaw. Thank you, all of you, so much. <laughs>